Alrighty, folks, welcome back to the Bible study. We're going to, get, we're going to do current events next time. We'll be here next week, we're willing. Same time, same station. Remember those old things on TV? Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're just starting back to the Bible study. We've been doing a teaching on, uh, I forget the name of the teaching field. Uh, Amazing. Um, uh, uh, biblical facts. Or Amazing what I don't biblical remember. facts. Yeah, something like we'll that. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. He has a name up somewhere. i got to hear somewhere too. Well, I'm more, i got to look it up. Amazing Biblical Facts, Giants and Pyramids. And we've been trying to cover things that are totally scriptural and tied up with actual happenings in history and in the future. That's one thing about the Bible. It covers history, present, and future all in one verse. Mm-hmm. And, and I said before that the Bible is 100% accurate, albeit sometimes understated. Just like I said before, if I say that ocean is a big pond of water, that's very true, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But... That's another statement. Mm -hmm. So these are things we have to understand. The Bible is absolutely 100% accurate. But it glorifies our Father if we look deeper into the Scriptures and learn what He's saying to us and how how, how, how it pertains to us in the day we live in. This is not a book written for 4,000 years ago nor a book written for 2,000 years ahead. It is, but it's for us today or it wouldn't be here for us. Uh, We just tried to get through talking to Lindsay Williams, of course. He said that you know, the fear will be a controlling factor. What does the Bible say about men's hearts telling them because of fear? Mm-hmm. In the right. latter days. In the latter days. Now, mm-hmm. uh, this is important. I'm going to read to you and start off in Daniel chapter 12, a verse, before we get into the lesson today. And that this lesson I've been studying on, and say this wonderful book I have right here, uh, as the days of those were. To get this book, if you want a book for your library to bolster your faith in scriptures this book will do it this is a I just finished up this past Friday I, it took me a month to read it because I was I wasn't just reading it I was studying it digesting it digesting exactly and I went through scripture and I went through history and I tied it in and it's a phenomenal fact that our father in heaven has given us a knowledge to understand his ways as much as our little feeble brains can grasp it Unfortunately, my brain is very feeble. Don't say a word, Kelly. Well, you're thinking awful loud. <laughs> then Daniel, Daniel made a statement, Daniel 12. And I think that you, if, if you'll bear with me and understand what I'm trying to teach today, you'll see things coming out now that were not brought out before, probably, at least not in this nation, in, in the time that I've studied history, that's now being brought out before us and people don't want to hear it. Daniel 12, chapter uh, 4. This is what God told Daniel. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words. That means close them up. And seal the book. Now pay attention. Even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. He said, Daniel, these words are not to be understood to the end times. That's what he said. These words will be brought forward in the end times of what's going to happen, and people will grasp it. If you would have, t- if you would have tried to teach me even 20 years ago what I see coming together now, I would have a hard time understanding what I'm seeing. But Dan- he told Daniel, said, shut up the book, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. We're now seeing things happen that before were uh, beyond our grasp to understand. I mean, who would have believed at one time uh, 50 years ago, Phil Hudock, would you believe that you would have a system set up where the whole world could be watched via computer and chips and data? Would you ever believe that be able to think that possible? I was 14 years old. Yeah, can think about that. I was in junior high. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. The world this. was different. Huh? It was different completely. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought that the technology we have today that's capable of tracking you everywhere you are, any business you're in, they can watch you. Most of they can hear what you're saying. And they now have a capability on their digital cameras, taken in, in, in government spaces, to know who you are anywhere in the world. Butch, when I first started teaching, I was teaching slide rules. <laughs> Calculators weren't, weren't available until stu- to students yeah. until I was already teaching physics at, at uh, Tiger Valley. Well, along this lesson, I'm going to tell you about something about computers. Would you believe that computers actually existed before Christ? Wow. Say it again. Computers existed before Christ. Well, there was a form of, yeah. yeah. What was it, apples? Yeah, apples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. You know, you know we, I want to start out in this, some scripture I want to read to you first. And I think you'll find uh, 
Very interesting. But as, as article I just read the other day, and we all have heard about people uh, living to be 100 years old, 120 years old. It's actual, actual news. It's happened. It really has happened. This gentleman right here they've discovered is uh, from uh, an Ethiopian. And he's 160 years old. True story. He said he remembers, especially uh, when when uh, when Ethiopia was invaded. Uh, I'm trying to find by Italy. He was married and had uh, a son old enough to herd cattle. This is 1895. True story. Here it is. Now that you can verify this. Now we know for sure that Jeannie come out a French woman uh, lived to be 122, and Michel Akawat uh, in. Uh, uh, I think it was a uh, what town is he from? So anyway, he was 114, and a, a lady from Bolivia named Carmelo Flores lived to be 123. So 160 sounds terribly old, but it's 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 happened. Now think about the history this man could tell you of his life, not to mention what's happened worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is things that we look at, and we just shrug. So. People can live longer than this allotted 70 years or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. But I want to read some scripture to you. And I want and if you, you write down what I'm reading to you, if you'll check it out later. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now I want you to listen to what it said because this is an important, some important scripture that I read many times and I didn't really tie together with some of the things I'm learning now. He said in verse 11, and for this cause, you go back and find what that cause is. They've forgotten God. They've turned against his laws. That God shall send them strong delusion. Mm -hmm. That they shall be, believe a lie and be damned. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Just, we've got to stop here a second. What type of delusion will God send the people that forget him that will believe a lie and be damned? How about let me just explain to you about the collapse of the, of the dollar, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And people scared to death that will follow anybody right into hell to put food on the table. How about rapture? How about rapture? About one saved all said all that delusion. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. think a minute, please. God is going to send the delusion, not, not Satan. We've trusted Satan already. Now God says, okay, you want that? You got it. And when he's sending it, there's no way out of it. God created sin. Yeah. He, he let evil exist. Now think a minute. When God says, I'll send it, folks, what's your, what's your way out of it? It's too late then. Yeah. Become reprobate. You cross the line. You cross the line. Mm -hmm. Now, also, as scripture we've already read, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he's, he, he, verse 15, he's talking about to the woman and, and the sin they committed and of Satan and the woman. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now, pay attention. Between thy seed and her seed. Satan has a seed. Mm -hmm. Satan has bred children. To the fallen devils, if you will. Now, I got, I, I, I mentioned this last time, I mentioned again, Noah was no more righteous than any other man, but he was the last purest human seed on earth. All the other seed on earth had been polluted by yeah. the demonic seed. He was not corrupted mm -hmm. yet. He was not corrupted yet. Now, that's serious. Satan tried to stop the line of Christ by, by polluting the seed of man where Christ did not be born a man. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he come that close. But you think our father already knew that? Mm -hmm. Of course he did. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and he's polluting seed again. Mm -hmm. But it's important. And, and of course, Matthew 24, 37, as, as the days of Noah were, so it also shall be coming son of a man be. You've got to know what the days of Noah were like to understand what the coming of mm -hmm. Christ is. <coughs> And again, Luke 21, 26. Men's hearts filling them for fear. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now that means literal authorities of heaven shall be shaken. Maybe the earth will be shaken. Maybe the heavens literally be shaken. The physical part. But the powers of heaven will be shaken. How many of y'all know that when Daniel prayed for deliverance, he prayed how many days? 21. 21. How long take for him to get an answer? 21. 21. And why? Who delayed the, the, who delayed the answer? All the way up the <laughs> Satan delayed the angel, the angel of God. He followed him 21 days to overcome him to bring an answer to, 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 to David. Now understand this. This is important. If Satan can fight an angel 21 days, what can he do to you? A lot. 
That's something, Dick. Mm -hmm. And none of God's angels cannot respond until we first ask the Father. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. They can't. They're there. The demons are there, and so is the angels. And neither one can. Mm -hmm. We we open open the door for either one. In Daniel yes. two forty three, and whereas thou sawest, this is a prophecy, iron mixed with miry clay. Now pay attention, please. I read this many times. I didn't catch this. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They, the angels, they, the fallen angels. A prophecy for the last days. Yeah, that's present day. That's not past. Exactly. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Mm -hmm. They being the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And First Timothy four verse one. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some should depart from the faith, giving heed, now pay attention, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mm -hmm. Well, one time, ancient people would call them, followed devils literally, and thought they were following mm -hmm. gods. Because these beings have power far beyond man. <coughs> Which today they're still doing it. Oh, yes, they are. Any comments so far? In Psalm 78, 1 through 4. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which ye may have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Verse 49. He has cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. That's exactly what's happened. Mm -hmm. the older have not Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. We've not. He sends them among us to judge us. I didn't write the book, folks. I just teach it. Any comments so far? It's because of our sins that he, he sends them among us. Sure. It's because of our <laughs> reprobate attitude. It's because of us saying that the law has been done away with and choose not to follow God's statutes, precepts, and judgments, then we're saying, okay, God, step aside. And he's saying, okay, watch this. Yep, and, and he did. That's when he goes in a strong delusion. Seeking yeah, honey. first the kingdom of God. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. Make sure this day whom you may serve. Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. And, we're going and we to, uh, make that choice several times a day. Now, I am sharing out this book because it's important. This is all scripture. This scripture to back. I'm going to read scripture to you to back this. And if we just will take time, and folks believe me, studying the scriptures will stretch your brain. Mm -hmm. My brain is already pretty thin already. <laughs> but it will stretch your mind to see beyond the veil of this flesh. When you understand who our God is, the powers that he controls, the powers that he let be created. He created himself to bring forth his will on this earth, both good and evil. Oh yeah, Isaiah 45, 7 said he created both good and evil. Now this is important. You see, he gave us a will, a free will to determine who we want to follow. And as time advances, for those that love him and seek him, more should be revealed to us in the last days that Daniel just said. Why would God reveal to us his will as things unfold? What's his purpose showing us this? To bring us back into the fold. Exactly. To protect us, mm -hmm. to warn us, mm -hmm. and prepare us. That's right. Okay? So he's, I'm just, we're trying now by his grace to try to get this point across that we understand what's coming in the future. It's already here, but it's going to increase. As Lindsay has said, fear. And as, as the economy collapses, we see evil exploding. We see Christianity becoming a hate religion. Mm -hmm. People hate Christians. Mm -hmm. we, and it's happened all the world is coming here. Mm -hmm. And we'll do current events next week. You'll find out that the people, uh, one couple would, would, would not let them use their farm to do a homosexual marriage, and they were, they were fined $13,000. Mm -hmm. And you know, the sad thing about that article is this particular people who owned a farm had, it's the sodomite couple that walked up to their front door and yeah. said, we'd like to use your place for our wedding. And yeah. people said no. They, the people on the farm never advertise it. They don't perform weddings there. It's not something that's done normally. It's just this yeah. side of my couple walk up to normal and say, hey, venue. Yeah. It wasn't a business. No. no. 
Now, we know the Bible talks about the corruption of all flesh. Mm-hmm. Now, let me read to you, if you would, Genesis chapter 6, 12 and 13. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted us is his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, Then of all flesh is coming before me, for the earth is filled with violence through, it, through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the earth, or with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. Mm-hmm. Now pay attention. He said, All flesh is corrupted. Now listen to me. Why would he say all flesh? Do animals have flesh? Because we were born yeah. in sin. Do you understand that even the animals are corrupted because of man's sin? Yes. Yeah. Now, does the Bible not tell us in Romans chapter 8 that all of creation moans yes. because of man's sin? Man's sin didn't just corrupt the man to sin, it corrupts the whole world. Do you understand now the importance of the blood of Christ for those that live in this world and we live in this world? Mm-hmm. Any comments so far? Genesis 6 12 13. Now, I read these books as history books, not as the Bible, but I will quote to you from the book of Enoch. Mm-hmm. I love the books, I've got to get them back, because these are good history books. These are not scriptural, but they're good history. And all the others together with them took them to themselves wives, and talked about the fallen angels, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go into them, and to defile themselves with them, and they became pregnant, and they were bare great giants whose height was 3,000 uh, eels, oh, I didn't check what eel was, uh, who consumed all the uh, acquisition of man. And when man could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. They began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and to drink the blood. Then the earth laid a ca- accusation against the lawless ones. Now, this is time up of the Bible. The giants did pollute this earth. Mm-hmm. You understand that? Mm-hmm. And actually, you'll find in, in, in Joshua, when they were getting ready to go into the promised land, the giants, they said these people are, uh, uh, not Joshua, the Exodus, these giants eat people. Mm-hmm. They, actually eat the, they actually eat flesh of people. This is in your Bible. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I didn't yeah, either. It is. In, in the book of Jubilees, and lawlessness increased on the earth, and all flesh corrupted its way. Like men and then cattle and beasts and birds and everything that walks on the earth. All of them corrupted their ways and, and their orders. And they began to devour each other. And lawlessness increased on the earth until, until every imagination of the thoughts of all men was thus evil continually. Does that fit in with the scriptures? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you see this coming together today? I, I, who was it mentioned a minute ago? They went downtown and they couldn't believe the, the, corrupt, uh, the, the corruptness of a youth. Who was it told me this a minute ago? Said this. Sam told me that. He said he couldn't believe how the young people are so corrupted and so decadent. Do you understand when God judged Sodom and Gomorrah and all the other cities around them, five altogether, he destroyed the children also and every animal there also? Mm-hmm. Please understand, folks, this is coming in, into us today. Maybe I don't understand, I don't see worldwide, but I see here. Mm-hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men and other beasts, and other fishes and other birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. He's talking about two different, and I wish that time getting this, I just can't get into all, but there, there are two kinds of flesh, men, animals, beasts, birds, and celestial one from heaven, those from earth. There's flesh, that's natural flesh created for this earth, but celestial beings come down and mingle with them. Right. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in a second, what I'm telling you. And corrupted the flesh on the earth. Any comments so far? What happened then can happen again. Exactly. Oh, you can see that. The fallen angels, and there's some places called, they're called the sons of God, but they, they're created beings. This is ju- Jubilees again. Were sent down to teach mankind truth and justice, and for 300 years and did indeed teach Cain's and son, Enoch, and all the six of heaven and earth. Later, however, they lusted after mortal women and defiled themselves by sexual intercourse. Enoch was recorded not only uh, their divine instructions, but also the subsequent fall from grace before the end that they were indiscriminately enjoying virgins, matrons, men, men and beasts. Now that, that is a phenomenal thing to think about, that actually the fallen angels could have intercourse with people. We're created in the image of God and the angels. I mean, why wouldn't it may not make sense that what we have, they would also have? Sure. But the thing that's brought today in today's society is that angels are neither male nor female. 
I'm sorry. The, the scriptures don't teach that. And to bring forth hybrids mm -hmm. of humans and animals. In 2003, for example, China, Chinese successfully fused human genes with rabbit eggs. Mm -hmm. Why would they want to put human genes in rabbit eggs? To multiply. Anything they can, anything their mind can conceive, they can do. Yeah, exactly. Because there, there's no constraint. No constraint. In 2005, a uh, panel, uh, panel convened at John Hopkins to discuss the humanizing of chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. 2007, UK gives OK to create and research chimeras. What's a chimera? It's a combination of an animal yeah. and, and a human. Human. 2009, Louisiana passes a law that makes it illegal to create a human animal. And my question is, if that's got to be a law, then it must be possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, for, for years and years, you've got these, um, I'll call them tree huggers. There's nothing wrong with hugging a tree, I guess, as long as you realize it's just a tree. It's just a tree. Yeah. You're trying to hold the up and fall or something. But, you know, there have been people who have tried to get from animals to communicate with them and teach them sign language or whatever, to teach them to communicate and get them to think about the idea of mortality and death and mm -hmm. all that. And they've never been able to do it. They've never got an animal to think beyond its present, you know, need for uh, food or whatever. But they've got this urge that they want to give animals people-like qualities and that they, they want to <coughs> basically put them and us in the exact same league to where, you know, well, these animals really have a soul Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, yep. and so, you know, they're driven to do that. They've been doing, trying to do that for years. And look, the other way, they brought people down to level animals, too. Oh, yeah. Only be satisfied for the moment. And, and for instance, the books, <laughs> the, the uh, reading books, the little, I forget what they call the golden something books right. you know, that the, the, the children used to read, were about family life, about working with your dad, about work, uh, cooking with your mom in the kitchen and, and all those things. Now everything is animals. It's just animals. And, they and, they and relate to animals, yeah. you know, and animals that talk animals and animals that are like people. Look at all the movies. You Not to do a little. That. Yeah, everything. But isn't it so, Phil, since the school system now is really pushing evolution, that we are classified animal? Mammals. Yeah, they, they want to blur I, uh, any difference. I was in a heap of trouble one time because I stood my ground and I stood my fifth grade teacher and telling her she was saying that we were all animals. Mm -hmm. Our quest. I am not an animal. I'm created in God's image, and God was not an animal. I am not an animal. And all she got, she was in a wheelchair, and she mm -hmm. would fall asleep, and then she'd pray up and get jump on whoever she'd seen first. But Mom and Dad went to school on that one, and they said, "Don't you ever mm -hmm. correct her when she's taken a godly stand for something." Said, you know, they they supported the teachers and everything, and that was back in the day when most people oh, didn't sure. question the teacher. You know, you didn't right. question them, and uh, and there's been a lot of times in my life that I've prayed to go back to being, and then uh, now when I was a freshman in high school was when I stood strong, and I think mm -hmm. that has helped me to understand where other people's coming from and how dangerous it can be, because I stood strong for once saved, always saved, <coughs> that's how I was brought up. Oh, yeah. You know, and... But most of it was, you know, if, if you're going out and you're living like the world, then you were never saved. You know, I mean, we were never taught that if you were saved and lived in adultery, caught, you'd die in adultery, that you'd still go to heaven. That's not how we were taught that, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, still, though, it's a dangerous teaching, especially <laughs> how they're doing it today. You know, if you went to the altar when you was five years old, that's it, you're fine for the rest of your life. But... Uh, but oftentimes I'll pray, you know, God, take me back to the strength I had in my youth as a child and, and you know, help me to stand in what I've learned and what I've learned. That's a continual battle. Is to just, just to keep mm -hmm. back and keep that mind set that you had then when right. nobody, you know, Satan doesn't want you wrong, to have that. He wants you, know. you to lose it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I just read in Louisiana in 2009, they passed a law against human-animal hybrid probation, act they call it. Arizona in 2010 passed the same law, Human Animal Prohibition Act. Now wait a minute, let's stop and think a minute. Human Animal Prohibition Act. Maybe they must have been doing it before. Now, obviously. Yes. 
Now, let's let that and the Discovery Channel 2012 released an article entitled 10 Ways Science is Using Human Animal Hybrids. Now, I'm convinced they're far beyond what we know already. Oh, yes. But in, De- in Exodus 22 19, God wrote this in the scriptures Whoso lies with the beast shall surely put to death. Mm-hmm. Do you all know where syphilis come from? Sheep. Sheep. How did, how did people get sick? Okay. Yeah. Le- Le- Leviticus 20, 15, 16. If a man lie with the beast, he shall, shall be put to death, and he shall slay the beast. And if a woman approaches the beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman. I didn't write this. And the beast, they shall be put to death, their blood shall be them. Now why was why would a almighty, holy father create everything, a holy God, no, why would he fear men and animals creating, uh, cre- co- cre- uh, cre- creating? I know life? it happens in other countries, but that's why we don't have a whole lot of 160-year-old men or women in this country is because everything's okay. Everything's fine. So mm-hmm. that's what we're... Generations are killing he was generations. Fighting, he was fighting spiritual and physical cancer. That was exactly. <laughs> now this, this you know, we, we, we read this and, we, and it kind of came over it, but... It must be possible then for science <coughs> to use animals and human genes, mm-hmm. DNA, to make another, another animal. Well, also, I know that we didn't touch on this today, but there was a time before the angels had their relations with women. There's been some records, uh, archaeology done, that they were doing it with animals. And they're having half angel animal, looked like a human, mm-hmm. and half animal. The book of Jazzer also talks about one place where one of the sons of Jazzer was tending the sheep in this like huge flock of a herd of whatever you want to call it, of half human, half animals come out of the sky. So even in that time of Israel, it was existing and happening. We're going to get further into some things like that a little bit longer in the next. Mm-hmm. I like to finish up, but no later than the next lesson. But I'm not going to rush through it. I want to cover now some things that I've read on, never really thought much of. You ever heard of the pyramids? Mm-hmm. And I went and thought, man, that's amazing. They could drag a stone and weigh 23 ton, 500 miles on skids. Mm-hmm. That ain't how it happened at all. Mm-hmm. Now, come on now, folks. Let's part of that. I'm going to read to you, though. We all thought the pyramids basically existed in Egypt, but that's not true. They were worldwide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're some off the keys of Florida underwater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're in Mesopotamia, Nubia, Greece, China, Mesoamerica, Sudan, North America, Medieval Europe, Rome, Europe, India, Indonesia. And they were all over the world. There were some things about this that I did not know. And we're going to share with you. For example, all of them basically pointed to the same Orion mm-hmm. star. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, uh, constellation. Now, what a coincidence! All over the world, all these pyramids built by ancient men with with wooden hammer, uh, uh, stone hammers, and weigh tons apiece, build them point and sort of the same star. Wow! What a coincidence! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to share with you a few facts in the back in the book here. I think this is absolutely this, this this just blows my mind that we and and scientists try to shove it aside. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to think about this. By the way, the New Jerusalem in the Bible, we ever read the New Jerusalem? Mm-hmm. It's, it's shaped like a pyramid. It's not square. Yeah. Seven, you study it, you see. Now, we know that Israel worshiped the Queen of Heaven. We know that. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. The name was Astaroth or Easter or Easter or Diana, as Paul writes about you, Jeremiah 7 18. And from, from Egypt and Babylon, Nimrod, the name Nimrod means let us rebel. Mm-hmm. Babel means the gate to heaven. That's what the word means. Wow. Ziggurats, or we also call them pyramids, high places built worldwide on the same star line, the latitude band that connects pyramid with stars to, to, to behold some stellar alignment, Orion, and planet X comes from Orion. <coughs> Ever heard of planet X? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if this all coincides not about planet X. I don't know. But we, uh, and I'm just saying that when you look at these facts and see that this was a design, not an accident, there are powers we haven't really thought about in play here. Now, our Father is in charge of all this. He knows all this. But we didn't know this. We assumed that called the study in school with everything just the way he said it was. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Try, 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 try,
The pyramid is, is estimated to have, tw this is one pyramid, the Pyramid of Giza, 2,300,000 stone blocks that weigh from th 2 to 30 tons each. Well, then the giants had to do that. How many? 2 the two million three hundred thousand. Okay, two million three hundred thousand weighing five hundred piece. To make two, two to two to thirty tons a piece. Oh, two to thirty tons yes. a piece. <laughs> and some over fifty tons. Now the base is thirteen acres. Thirteen is that number for depravity and rebellion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just finished. Y'all find this interesting? Mm -hmm. There's ninety million cubic feet of space. Each joint of these stones are from zero point one zero to zero point two zero. A, a width between them. You can't put a knife blade between them. Whoa. Now that's not bad people with stone hammers. <laughs> not really. Any comments so far? I'm going to share with you some of the facts I think you'll find interesting. I, I wish I had time to do all these. I'll get through more maybe later on. <coughs> uh, the Great Pyramid, it's the center of all land mass. Where it's located, the center of all land mass. Why the coincidence? What's the odds of that, Phil? It's located at the center of the land mass of the earth. The east-west parallel crosses the most, the most land and the north-south medium, medium, meridian that crosses the most land intersecting in two places on the earth, one in the ocean, the other the Great Pyramid. That, that's the center of all earth and gravity. Whoa. Whoa. Man, those are pretty smart people be 4,000 years ago. Yeah, I got to figure out how that works. But. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now he's got you thinking again, do not he? But, <laughs> the Great Pyramid had a swivel door entrance at one time. Swivel doors were found in only two other pyramids, and a swivel door entrance, not, you could push them up with your finger if you knew how to, if they found the door. Now, we're talking about tons and tons of weight you could push open. <laughs> now, that's pretty well balanced. Uh, yeah. Any comments so far? I've got a lot more to share with you, but I just want to share that, those facts with you. That's like uh, there's a, there was a place called Coral Castle in Florida where... A guy, and they're not sure how he did it all. He built uh, things out of tons and tons of coral, uh, uh, you know, cord mm -hmm. coral. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it. one of the things he had. There was a door. It was tons and tons swivel door, but you could open it with your finger. It's amazing. Yeah. And these people had nothing but stone hammers. I mean, I just keep saying over and over because make a point. They actually thought this was created by people that with that. Well, the funny thing is, yeah, that, like you. You were to read some of these Smithsonian magazines and stuff. They'll tell you that these scientists come up with these ideas, you know, with barges and mm -hmm. with, with rollers we'll and, in too. and everything. But when they've tried to recreate it, getting enough people that they thought could do this or to stand up one of these obelisks, mm -hmm. they found that they can't do it. Even with the they, modern equipment can't do it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's some of them that they would have trouble with because with modern equipment, they would actually break. It's like not like we don't have the equipment to do it, but because of the size of it, you could, yeah, could it, would, it would break. You would, you know. <clears throat> now I showed this before, but I'll show it to you again. Balance, like the, if you can see it on TV screen, these this is a, actually ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, and if you look at the pictures, you will see a helicopter, just as clear as day. Mm -hmm. You will see a submarine, a jet, on stone hieroglyphics. Now, I just wonder, how did 4,000, 4,500 years ago, they didn't know what a helicopter looked like? Yeah, no. I'm not making this up, folks. This is actual, this is actual stuff. Advanced society. This, this is not a coincidence. Now, listen to this. I'm going to read this to you because this is too important to skip. This is the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Science and archaeology teach that people cut and pull the huge stones that make up the Great Pyramid. According to this same, the same scientists, they set them in place using pulleys, ramps, levers, and other methods over a 20-year period commonly believed to range from 2050, 2560 to 2540 B.C. Let's calculate and see if it's possible to build the Great Pyramid in 20 years. The Great Pyramid consists of 2.3 million limestone blocks. If, the, if we stick to the theory that these 2.3 million blocks were taken from a quarry on the other side of the Nile River, we need to figure out how many blocks per day they would have. They need to cut and set in place in order to complete the pyramid. Now let's look at this scientifically, okay? 360 days per year by 20 years is 7,300 days to construct it. 2,330,000 blocks uh, slice 7,300 days is 315 blocks per day. <laughs> 24 hours per day, 315 blocks is 13 blocks per hour. 16 minutes per hour, 13 blocks, 4 minutes, and 10 seconds per block. 
And, cut them, and, and to cut them that perfect. Cut them and get them to set up and in four minutes. T- <laughs> That's science. Mm-hmm. Based on the numbers presented by the archaeologists, the, bull- the builders will have, to be- have had four minutes and ten seconds to cut each block, move it across the river, up the ramps, and set it in place in order to get this project completed in 20 years. Once we look at the, at, at the, the numbers, the archaeological explanation seems just a little bit absurd, to say the least. The sad part is that many people will believe absolutely anything without verifying it themselves as long as the word science is attached to it. Or some of the letters by the name says it actually. There are several factors that make this theory absolutely absurd to the point that it should not even be considered as possible. The stones that make up the king's chamber weigh 25 to 80 tons each and were transported from 500 miles away. 80 tons calculate to roughly 160,000 pounds. The standing theory is that the Egyptians cut these stones by hand, moved them from up the Nile River by boat, and then pushed and pulled them up winding ramps to set them in place. This is a lot of work to do in four minutes and ten seconds, even if the stone quarries were not across the river, uh, were not just across the river, but 500 miles away. <coughs> now just let that sink in a minute. Yeah, and I thought building Mr. Obama head was something. <laughs> 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 now, I, I mean, I'm just, does, does this fascinate you like it does me? Oh yes, it does. Uh, but we we know this had to be done by superior, we we'll say, stronger, more intelligent beings than man. Go ahead. Well, it makes sense on this to bring a thirty thousand pound stone five hundred miles away up the Nile River, off of a barge, and pull it to site, and you're doing one every four and four and a half minutes. And they also had to. Carve them out, mm-hmm. and they, they were set and balanced so, perfectly. So we're, we're talking of a work crew of not just a, maybe a thousand people. We're talking of a work crew of two to three, four million people. It possible to make that happen? And for even that many people to make to make every four minutes and ten seconds working on one stone, yeah. I get four million people working on one stone. I think they'd be running into each other. They have a traffic jam. That's what they it'd be. Definitely have a traffic jam. <laughs> so those stones. Toes. So, so Butch, common sense would be. Those stones to be produced that quick and that fast, and that cut perfect. Well, I'll give an example. For example, working at a company in Montana, we use laser cutters to cut di- diagrams in metal, which just takes a matter of a little bit of time. The same lasers can cut stone, so they had to have something far more advanced than hammer and chisel to cut stone. Oh, yes. To make it happen. Yes. Well, and to get them so so balanced. That's that's mm-hmm. where my mind is just getting it. Zero point one zero to zero point two zero was thinner than knife blade. A very good knife blade. So they had to have something far more advanced than yes. hammer and chisel. Well, can you imagine what it would take to feed them? What kind of a sewage system they would have to have? Oh. You know, it just <laughs> that was the mortar they you used. You couldn't see it up here on your butter, buddy's foot. <laughs> you couldn't do it today. No, you oh, couldn't. With you could. Dark with no, you could. I got, I'm reading this to you because I don't want to try to memorize it and put notes. I want to read it in its form so you comprehend it. Maybe may be even better. You know why better we than couldn't do it today? Because everything would be on back order. <laughs> For many years, people have been fascinated with pyramids and the great mystery, mysteries surrounding them. Above ground and under the sea, and under the sea, yeah, they just under the sea. They are all over the entire world, some ele- even allegedly emitting electro- electromagnetic energy. <coughs> Wait, Curious I'm... about that. Well, they could, uh, you know, a piece of wire is an antenna. As a matter of fact, that's why you can't go through a construction zone and talk on a radio mm-hmm. because because things are receive these, these uh, radio waves and resonate with it, and that's called induced voltage, and you can actually cause the... Uh, you know the explosive to go off because you created a current yeah now for instance when there's an earthquake quite often they see lights in the sky Mm -hmm. and that's because if you take a quartz crystal it's called the piezoelectric effect if you strike a quartz crystal it will create electricity okay the the opposite is if you take electricity you can cause a quartz crystal to vibrate and that's how your quartz watch works there's a the battery causes that little quartz crystal to vibrate Okay, but there's no reason to think that the Earth itself, which has a natural frequency of uh, I think it's like 6.83 hertz. Okay, the Earth actually uh, resonates because of um, it's like an antenna. So does our bodies. Our bodies and everything. Yeah, uh, a, a pyramid could be 
a radio receiver, just like the wire on your car, your FM radio wire, or or any any antenna. Kind of right? It can it can be an antenna. You you're you know when you touch a radio, sometimes you touch yeah. the antenna, it gets louder. Why? Yeah. You're the yeah. antenna. Yeah. You are receiving radio waves, and and you are actually inducing that current into the antenna, and, and you get a better reception. So you're you are an antenna. You're just boosting it. We so, would yeah. do that when I was growing up with the little transistor radio. Oh, yeah. So now I know how a quartz watch works. I did not know that. Dad put, a, put yeah. a clothes hanger on his, if his antenna broke off, he just put a clothes hanger yep. on it. You know, just yeah, stick clothes the hanger, but you didn't use your, your finger and use your body. That'd be kind of the hard to drive out. <laughs> but <laughs> people do strange things. But now they're exactly. finding various pyramids of systems of tunnels and caves beneath them, and the latest of this is, is uh, the Giza. But the strange thing is that the, that experts are denying it for reasons nobody knows. In an ancient, in an in an ancient Nephilim uh, Anakin ritualistic place of sacrifice, is it could be? Of course, it could be. Mm -hmm. Is it still used by the Illuminati, or going to be used again by them during the final days? Yes, I think so. The pyramids on the back of the dollar bill. With no capstone. Mm -hmm. Okay, pay attention to that. We know positively that the Illuminati are of, are the, of the serpent seed, uh, fallen angels, Nephilim, and they are associated with the pyramids in various places throughout the world where Baal worship has taken place, along with many of the uh, megalithic mystery, uh, mystery structures. The fallen angels are highly intelligent, mm -hmm. and no matter how hard we today might try, we will never be able to match their technology. The, though Sir Isaac Newton did not acknowledge Nephilim or the fallen angels that I am aware of, he too was intrigued by these impressive structures. The Great Pyramid is one of the most comprehensively surveyed buildings in the, on the earth. Scientists over the centuries have, been, have taken thousands of measurements in their quest to find out more about these mysteries. Among those intrigued by the incredible accuracy of the pyramids of construction was a great scientist and mathematician, Sir Isaac Newton. According to his formula, according to formula formulate that his famous in all gravity, Newton needed to know the diameter of the Earth. However, in the 1600s, no measurement was accurate enough, especially since Newton theorized that the Earth's spin would cause an uh, equatorial bulge. Having heard legends claiming the knowledge of the Earth, the past, and the future were contained in the pyramid, Newton set out to investigate. Now, this is interesting. After studying the, uh, this is what I like to study. Mm -hmm. I love the study, man. It's boom, boom, boom. And they've done it and learned something. Mm -hmm. uh, after studying the de detailed measurements made by the investigator before him, Newton recognized that many key measurements would be in, be in round numbers if the standard unit measure was just 0 0.001, or one one thousand inch larger than the British inch width that just happened to be the sacred Jewish inch. The sacred Jewish inch is one twenty-fifth of a cubit, equals 1.00106 British inches. This discovery allowed the secret of the pyramid to be unlocked and revealed unmistakable in mathematical relations. Now, I, I, I don't want time to do all this, but I, so Isaac Newton figured out the circumference of the earth by using pyramids. Uh, how is that possible? Think about that a minute. In a pyramid built 4,500 years ago, scientists, even in 1600, figured out the, the circumference of the earth within inches. How can that be, Phil? Hmm. Because it's uh, it's it's God God's it's in God's plan. For instance, Isaac Newton was very spirit, very Christian, very spiritual. He looked for years and years to try to figure out the Bible code. He figured there was a code in the Bible, and he never could figure it out. Only because he didn't have the computers that those today. Uh, but still, we we still don't understand it. The Bible has. There's things about the Bible that are beyond man and will never be Christ. understood until, until, this world. until the end. Then, exactly. then we'll understand it all. That's what David just said. The last days we'll trust in these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the casting stones, the pyramid stones, 144,000 all, were so brilliant that they could literally be seen from the mountains of Israel hundreds of miles away. Yeah, they took off the uh, cover, the, uh, the, the, other, layer, yeah, the yeah. outer layer of the pyramids. On bright mornings, in late afternoon, sunlight's reflected by this vast mirrored surface of five and one quarter acres, distinguished the pyramid that is being visible from the moon, if you could, if you could the moon. For those interested in possible symbolic significance in the Bible, prophecy 144,000 is the number of people, 12,000 from each of 12 tribes of Israel, who are supposed to evangelize the world at the end time. The people of the area that had viewed the pyramid and, and, and its polished stones with, with all for centuries, 
with, with, when, when a 13th century earthquake loosened some of these casting stones, the Arabs recognized a great quarry of precast stones and could be used to finish all off palaces and, and mosques. Uh, for instance, the casting, the casting stones were used to rebuild the new city of El Karel, plus Cairo Mosque and palaces, including a mosque of salt in Hazan. Now, they destroyed it because the stones are beautiful. But I, how in the world, 144,000 thus fit in a prophecy, and there was a bright to see from Israel. Now, think about it. We're talking about a long ways. Isn't 144,000 also the same number in Revelation as those sealed in the forehead? Yes, it is. Now, let's just think in this little bit as well. Folks, I don't want to rush through this, but we've got to get into some of these things just to make some points. Now, I want to tell you if I can find it very quickly, too, about some more in the pyramid. But I want to share with you uh, quickly about another uh, building. How many have ever heard of Baalbek? The, the, the uh, massive Baalbek monument, okay? There's a picture of it right here. It's not a very good picture. It's not, it's not in color, but this right here is a picture of Baalbek. A city build, okay? Mm -hmm. That's Baalbek. Now listen to the figure about Baalbek. And tell me this wasn't dumb as something not greater than man. Normal man. Baalbek is probably one of the most massive sites on the planet. It consists of three temples dedicated to the worship of Venus, Bacchus, and Jupiter. Here are a few quick facts about Baalbek. The walls are built with 24 stones, each weighing approximately 300 tons. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> okay. The largest retaining wall consists of three stones, each weighing approximately 750 tons. Each! Oh, okay. The stone of the pregnant woman weighs an estimated 1,069 tons. Oh, she's pregnant all over. Oh, my. The largest stone, approximately 1,322 tons. Now, how did mortal man, I don't care how many of them were, do that? No. Could, could, you fi could, could you figure that the, maybe the giants had something to do with it? I think they did, obviously. The technology had to come from them. The man couldn't figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. Any comments so far? Could some of the stuff that we were finding and discovering, could it be before the pre-Adam era? Or could it be before creation? Both. I, I think, yes, definitely. Definitely. And I wanted to find some more about the. But anyway, we're going to get next week. We'll get back to study again. We're going to go into uh, more about the, about the times of Adam, right on, right on up uh, uh, to Methuselah on through there. There's, there's a good chance, no, no, no doubt, a real chance that Adam knew Methuselah. They lived that long. They knew each other. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at this research just a little further back and see how these link together. Because I think when you study Scripture and understand it, <coughs> the Bible says it, but we don't really. It doesn't get in to tell us what that means. <clears throat> So we study beyond that to learn. Okay? Wasn't Methuselah Enoch's son? Uh, thanks. Yes, he was. Oh, okay, all right. He was. But I'm going to reach you now about the pyramids a little bit on about the star constellation Orion. We're going to get more in stars next week, too. And the real constellations that glorify our Father, and He created them to do that. It starts with Virgo, the Virgin, and it goes back to Leo, your turning line. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, any of the questions that the stars proclaim the glories of God? Well, why not? He, he made them. He created them. So, yeah. <laughs> he, he knew that, that, that man all... worships the creation more than he does the Creator. Now, the Bible does mention Oreo, and, and, and it, it calls, it's called K E S L E in the Bible. Uh, and the word means and fool. <laughs> the, the word means fool. So, when you talk about Oreo, it's talking about the fool. Now, why would Satan set up pyramids to worship the fool? Because he's fooling man. You have, these days you have to be a real fool to worship Satan. Though, though this name perhaps is uh, Estimal, Estimal, I can't say the word, E-T-Y-M-O-L-O-G-I-C-L-L-O-I. It's Estimology connected with Kislev, the name for the ninth month of Hebrew calendar, which is turn may derive from the Hebrew root K-S-L as the words Kisel Kislev. Uh, but it goes on, and I can't read the whole, I don't understand if I read all the but this is what it boils down to. Did the fallen angels have some associated with Orion? God revealed many things in the Bible, but he currently has not told, any, uh, told us everything. Certainly, it's only, who, who knows where these angels travel, whether God's holy angels or dark angels? We know that Ephesians 10, 6, 10 to 23 states, Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan, the wiles of death, the devil. For we do not wrestle against uh, flesh and blood, but against, now pay attention, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood against principalities, against powers, uh, against rules of darkness in high places. 
and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may both stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Interesting thought. And imagine all, all the UFO, Nephilim, alien, Messiah talk that's been going on the past few years. Maybe they will, maybe they will claim to come from Orion, or Orion's belt, or from beyond the, the planetes. What's more, Illuminati-owned NASA would certainly provide photos and or video evidence of such a cosmic event that's leading the, even the elect to go astray. Mm-hmm. Satan's powers then just disappear. They, uh, I know today's modern churches teach that there are no devils and no one can be devil possessed and all this. And they teach that all this is still, that this is, is going to happen in our day. They actually teach that. That, yeah. that, that, that if, if you trust in Christ, Satan cannot lay a hand on you as far as tempting you or make you do anything. And I agree at that point to the point of free will. But we underestimate our enemy because we don't understand our God. Mm-hmm. Any comments so far? You better know your enemy. He tells you to know. Yes, he does. Now, next week I'm going to try, if I can, to get this wrapped up and get into some things. It's not going. To, it's probably going to blow your mind. I know it does mine. But do you know that our customs in America today? It's going to hurt somebody. I can't help it. Easter and Christmas and other things are pagan and devil worship. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You know this comes out of the Bible. They try to reveal it to us. Absolutely. And it's it's worshiping Satan's powers. Mm-hmm. I'm dead serious. And it hurts what? society. It hurts children when yes, they when they when we tell them these things that there is a Santa Claus and you know and then well, we and then you they, come when they're older and you tell them there's no Easter egg, there's yeah, no tooth yeah, fairy, there's no Santa what, now, Claus. Now but there believe. is a Jesus. Uh, yeah, right. Isn't it? Yeah. In the scripture just, teaches us to keep <clears throat> Passover. When Jesus died, he didn't die on Easter, he died on Passover. His death, burial, and resurrection was based on Passover. Mm-hmm. His ascension going to heaven was based on the Feast of Trump, not the Feast of Trump, the day of Pentecost. So why aren't we observing those days? Or at least known about them. Yeah, or you know, at least comprehending them and understanding what those precepts that God did give us had. This was forever. How many years ago have we, me, <coughs> uh, thought he rose on Sunday morning? <laughs> Do yeah. I actually thought so? Yeah. yeah. But we don't understand scripture. It's called New Math, Butch. It is called New Math. Yeah. And we used to have sunrise service, which, by the way, is in the Bible, but it's pagan. It is pagan. I'm you're dead worship, serious about this, you're okay? The God of the morning. Exactly. If we got five minutes left. I want to show you, if I could, just briefly, the lifespan of people who lived before, uh, before the flood and after the flood, uh, uh, how they shortened. But Adam died when he was 930 years old. Right. All right. Seth was born when Adam was 130 years old. And he died. He died at 1,042. Enos was born when uh, in 235 and, uh, and and died 1140. Now I want you to just keep this in line. And remember, Adam lived to be 930 years old. Keep mm-hmm. his numbers in line, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, my my Hallel was born in 395, so I Adam knew, knew who he was. Jared was born in 460. Enoch in 622. Methuselah in 687. And Lamech in 874. So Adam could have known all these biblical figures throughout his lifetime. Now, do you think that Adam may have told the story that he knew of his life to his people and passed on down? Yes. Mm-hmm. So we see people say, "Well, how do you know the Bible's right?" I mean, how, I mean it's not a, it's mm-hmm. by faith, obviously. But how do you how do you know that Adam taught right on down to Methuselah and on beyond that his life? What happened in the garden? He could tell the story literally to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, does that build your faith at all, knowing this this happened that way? Wow. Mm-hmm. And I'll read you one more verse. We're not time so quickly. In Genesis 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Now, listen. This is important. Without the insight of the original Hebrew and knowing the words, that's why I use a concordance. If you don't have a strong concordance, you need one. Look up the meaning of the word in the original language. You'd be surprised what you don't know. This verse is difficult to fully understand. We have a tendency to think of the word generations as referring to the time period in which Noah lived. Now pay attention. But the word actually means something different. The word translated generations is Toleth, which refers specifically to Noah's gene- genealogy, not generation. Genealogy. Genealogy. We're talking Genesis. of one single family line then. Yes. Okay. Think about that. Mm-hmm. The Hebrew word yashar, translated into the English word as just, means righteous, upright or righteous, which refers to Noah's moral character. The word translated as perfect is tamim, which refers to his physical appearance, 
It is the same word translated the following verse when he goes on through there. But anyway, we because they don't study the scriptures, we don't know that he didn't mean this was a generation not born. It means that he was born uh, as uh, the right genealogy. He hadn't been polluted yet by the seed of the serpent. Satan, or don't forget that Satan has a seed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they walk among us. Well, what do you do about it? Adam, uh, Noah was the last one not polluted in his family by his seed. Now, how serious is that? It is saying that Satan at that time, and as he still believes today, believes he can defeat God. Well, yeah, he's so he he can polluted the seed enough in those days. He, he believed he could beat or defeat God. Well, that, now you understand why the importance of the blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and we're going to wrap it next time with some more on the teachings of the uh, angels and, and the last days. But also, when next week, I'm going to show you the star signs and what they really mean. And, and, and I'm just, you have to understand what Virgo means, and Libra means, Scorpio, Sagittarius. All these are not astrology, they're astronomy. Right. Mm-hmm. And they are constellations. That the stars in this, for example, one star in Virgo, Coma, C-O-M-A, means the desire, the woman and child, and the desire of all nations. Centurius, same, same, uh, same Virgo, with two natures. Did Christ was Christ born a man? Yet yes. God. And also, it was it means the despised sin offering. Mm-hmm. That's what that star means. Booties, the coming one with branch. Christ for the branch. Okay? These stars actually mean this. How many of y'all knew that? I didn't. These are the names of the stars that mean that Christ and his return. And Leo, i got to do this. i got to wrap it up on this. Leo, it's phenomenal. Messiah, consummated triumph. That's what the word, the word Leo means. Hydra is one of the stars. The old serpent destroyed. Crater, the cup of wrath poured out. And Corvus, the birds of prey devouring. That's the meaning of the words of the stars. What a coincidence. No, it's biblical. It is biblical. Yeah. Any comments on, before we close? We've got two minutes. So, you close. I get it in close. We lost this video signal. They can hear it. But we lost, okay. It. Okay, yeah. lost video signal. Well, yeah. folks, we'll see you next time. A holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, oh church, take courage, it's your time to take a stand. Time to march with hearts courageous through the land. We're marching on with hearts courageous. We'll follow everywhere you want to And should you lead us where the battle rages Let us march with hearts courageous after you Sure.